Hello, my name is Stephen O'Dowd and I'm a Senior Director of Litigation Funding at Harbour. Very much a global concept, there's an interchanging of terminology which can be confusing, so you might hear these claims variously described as class actions, group actions, mass litigation, collective redress, but the ability of a group of people who have all suffered a common harm to collectively bring a claim, that ability has existed outside of the United States for a long time. Perhaps a newer phenomenon is the facilitation of class actions through the introduction of legislation. Genuine class action regimes that allow a single claimant to represent the interests of a much wider group. Taking examples outside of the US, Australia and Canada, they both have generic, genuine and quite mature class action regimes, and the UK. The UK has a class action regime. It's restricted only to competition litigation claims, but nevertheless, it's a genuine regime. So, very much a global concept. Class actions are typically large, both in scale and the amount of damages at stake, which means that they're expensive, both expensive in terms of your own side legal costs, and in some countries, you have the loser pays principle. So if you get it wrong, if you're unsuccessful in your claim, generally you will have to pay a large portion of your opponent's costs as well. The ability to shift that cost burden onto a litigation funder is really important in the context of a class action. And in my experience, even the largest well-resourced institutions would generally not use their standard litigation budget to participate on the claimant side in a class action. They tend to look for a risk management option such as litigation funding. I've no doubt that class actions will continue to develop and grow globally in the coming years. Why do I say that? Well, even the largest, most sophisticated institutional clients are becoming more familiar with and more comfortable with participating on the claimant side in class actions. And in some cases, they feel, they feel compelled to participate because the behavior of the defendant has been so egregious. Then from an investment perspective, I've said before, these claims tend to be large. The damages are significant, which can make them an attractive investment proposition for litigation funders. And with all of this happening, the experience and expertise of lawyers and the judiciary develops too. All those ingredients lead to growth. But I'm not somebody who agrees with some of the alarmists who say that there has been or will be an explosion of class actions, that the floodgates have opened or that they're about to open. If you take Australia as an example, some alarmists have been saying that about that regime for a long time, but the statistics don't back it up. Another issue, or a reason that there hasn't been or won't be an explosion is, I've mentioned it, the loser pays principle, which applies in Australia and some other countries. The price of getting it wrong is significant, which is a check and balance against frivolous claims. And also, I find that countries can be cautious about introducing legislation for class action regimes. They tend to set the threshold quite high for those claims being allowed to proceed. Take the UK as an example. The class action regime for competition claims is into its fourth year and not a single claim has got up yet. Not a single claim has been certified, which I think is quite telling. So I expect growth and development, but measured growth and development.